Energetic? Well, some cats are not too energetic. Have you noticed? Oh, they just try to stretch out and just really make it look like they're living the life of Riley. But a lot of people aren't too energetic. In the Bible, in Colossians 3, it tells us the necessary energy we must have if we're going to be happy. In the work that you're doing, work the best that you can. Work like you're working for the Lord, not for people. Remember that you'll receive your reward from the Lord. He will give you what he promised his people. You're serving the Lord Christ. When we forget who we're serving, it's easy to be unhappy. I think a lot of people in their daily work forget who they're serving to. Sometimes they get to talking about the boss or they get to talking about the company. And they forget, hey, on Friday they're the ones who write my paycheck as well. And so sometimes we lose the perspective. Well, who's writing our paycheck? Who's writing our heavenly rewards? Is it God Almighty? And when he says, in all that you do, you know, remember, do the best you can, work for the Lord, remember, you'll receive a reward from him. I like that little poster I see sometimes at the bookstore. It's with a little gopher coming out of the box hole, you know, or the gopher hole, I guess. And he's sitting there looking, and it says, work for the Lord. It says, the pay not be, may not be much, but the benefits are out of this world. Well, they are. The benefits are in the next world, aren't they? But there's benefit here, too. Don't forget, God wants his people to experience the goodness of happiness here down below as well. We need to be energetic if we're going to be happy. Now, sometimes a little cat finds himself confronted with something bigger than he is. And so what does he do? His fur goes up on the back, doesn't it? He goes, <laughs> like that. And that dog doesn't know what to do until the dog says, well, I'm not so sure this cat is serious. So he gets up a little bit closer, and those claws come out and grab that nose. Arr, 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 arr. You know, what happened to me? Where did those claws come from? Well, the Bible says we have to put up a resistance to Satan. Our attitude should be, we're going to resist Satan. And in so doing, we're happy because we know we're doing what God wants us to do. We're putting up the barrier with Christ there as our invisible shield. Jesus Christ can help us to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. He can help us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Isn't that what the model prayer says? And we know God is there helping you. How can you not be happy? That in all these things, you've got someone there pulling on your side, pulling, as it were, like you down the road. Your car is not working, but he's got a hold of it. Pulling of the rope, and he's, he's got several horses in front of him. Christ has got all that power with him. Resistance to Satan. What was it Peter said? Control yourselves and be careful. The devil is your enemy, and he goes around like a roaring lion looking for some person to eat. Don't you just know if this were a great big old mastiff here with those huge jaws that he could swallow that little kitten in a single bite if the kitten were all by himself? The kitten's not by himself. <laughs> He's got some weapons on his side, doesn't he? Just like we do, too. Now, evidences. We certainly need to look at the evidences all around us. That God is there. That God is working in our behalf. And that there is a God. Do you remember Psalm 19, that beautiful psalm that says, The heavens speak about God's glory. The skies tell about the good things His hands have made. Each new day tells us more of the story. Each night reveals more and more about God's power. When you look around and know there's a God, you have to, you have to know that you're not here by chance. That the universe is not here by chance. And how in the world can you think that your happiness would be by chance? If God put you in such a beautiful, beautiful world, does it make any sense that he would hate you and say, now I want you to be absolutely miserable in this beautiful world? Makes no sense at all. It just can't make sense. The God that put you here in this world wants it to be harmonious. We live in harmony with our world by being in harmony with our God. Now sometimes nature turns against us. There are floods, there are tornadoes, there are earthquakes, there are cyclones, there are all kinds of mudslides and avalanches. But remember, that's part of nature. Nature works on a set of laws that God has put in effect. Day and day under speech, night and the night utters knowledge. There is no language under speech. Where their voice is not heard, that same psalm tells us. But our God tells us that he's there by all we see around him. Every day tells more of the story. Every day I live tells me more of the story of how God wants me to be happy and love him and that he cares for me. Now, with this in mind, remember, 
A Christian can pray to God. No, the cat's not praying. But if you were, it would remind us that a Christian can pray to God with the assurance that God wants us to be happy and will provide a way. So therefore, always be full of joy. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. And when you pray, you know that you're happy because you know someone's listening. One of the saddest things for any person is to think that no one's listening to them. Did you know that? You know why so many people write suicide notes and jump off cliffs or shoot themselves with a gun or, or take uh, some kind of sleeping pills and fall asleep and never to wake up? Because they think that no one is listening to them. No one cares. The God of heaven cares about you. That's why it says, always be full of joy. Pray without ceasing. Have you noticed the two go together? Be full of joy. Pray without ceasing. One is tied directly in with the other. And so tonight when you pray, I want you to pray with joy, knowing that God is going to answer the things that you need to have. Now there are going to be some things you ask for, he's not going to answer the way you think he should. He will answer the prayer. But remember, he always answers one of three ways. Yes, no, or wait a while. Now that's the only three ways that God can answer a prayer. And sometimes what we think is a no turns out to be a yes later on. Just remember, there's a purpose in the way in which he answers it. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to continue to pray. And remember, with that attitude, he will always provide a way. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, With every temptation, the Lord there will provide a way of escape. No temptation is overtaking you, but such is common to man, that same verse said. So with all this in mind, let's review very briefly. And remember, your cup runs over, doesn't it? I would imagine two little cats in a cup would certainly overrun with it. <laughs> but just think of your cup running over, as uh, David said in Psalm 23. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Remember, too, that he will shelter you in the hollow of his hand. Isn't it amazing you take a whole litter of brand new kittens? Put them in your hand. Just imagine how many people God can put in his hand and still have plenty of room left. Six and three-fourths billion people on this earth. He loves every one of them. He wants every one of them to be happy. And he cares for every one of them. Well, let's smile a little bit like this old gentleman here. <laughs> it's this old guy doesn't have any teeth, does he? But he's just as happy as he can be. You know, it doesn't matter if you got teeth or if somebody kicks them out or if you live to be 150. But if you're happy because you're a Christian, what a wonderful advantage you have over the world. It's about attitude, isn't it? Let's remember, it's interest that we have. We're not alone. We trust in God. We have a healthy outlook. We're energetic. We put up resistance to Satan. And we know the evidence is there to keep us happy in God's will. Now, my friends, maybe you're not a Christian. I want you to know how much God loves you and wants you to be happy. Don't ever forget that, that he's there wanting you to come to him, have your sins washed away, and rejoice. Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. We just read that in Revelation 19. He reigns today. Does he reign in your heart? Won't you come right now while we stand in? Why do you wait, dear brother? Oh, why do you carry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you a place in His sanctuary.